Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Deen and Chai, a casual space to talk about Deen over a cup of chai or coffee or tea or any beverage you'd like. Today I've got a iced latte and today's topic is going to be about life in college or life as a student, inshallah. I recently put up a question box on Instagram about topics that you'd like to hear about and one of the ones that kept coming up, and one of the ones that kept coming up are tips on how to balance life as a student in college or in grad school and how to stay holding on to your faith and practicing uh, your faith as well as productivity and other things so i'm going to break it up into several videos this video is specifically going to cover five main tips to stay firm inshallah to your faith while a student at university and i'm going to give my experience as a student at university in a non-muslim country so i did my undergrad in a muslim country and then i went for grad school to the us so i was in a non-muslim country and the experience was very different and i had to put a lot more effort into making sure that i was holding firm into my faith because the environment was very different so i'm going to talk about it from that perspective inshallah so if you're a student and maybe the environment is non-Muslim and you're one of the few practicing, inshallah, I hope that these tips are beneficial. But it's also applicable if you're a student in college anywhere, whether you're in a Muslim country or not, you can still use these tips, inshallah, to make sure that you're prioritizing your faith alongside your schooling. And okay, so with that, inshallah, I'll jump into the first tip. The first tip that I wrote down is intentions having the intention to stay holding firm onto your faith is super important you have to have that intention inshallah and when you have that intention you will see doors open up in front of you and you will see things made easier from you because you're being intentional about prioritizing your faith i'll give you a quick example that reminded me how important intentions are so when i first moved to the u.s I had just stepped foot onto university for the first day and it was orientation day so where basically we would go to our school and have a full day of welcoming us to the department, the school that we would be in, showing us around and just talking to, to us about different things that we needed to know for our time at university. So when I went to this orientation, I came to campus, I knew that I was going to be there on campus during Dhuhr prayer time. And I didn't know where I was going to be able to pray Dhuhr. So I was keeping it in mind that I needed to figure out where I was going to be able to take a break and where I could find a space to pray. So anyways, we went through the whole morning of activities and sessions and different things, and then we got to lunchtime. And lunchtime coincided with Dhuhr prayer time. And so everyone was having lunch, they were serving food and everything, and everyone's chatting and talking. And I was really anxious in this time because I knew, okay, Vohar time had hit, and I still didn't figure out a way that I was going to pray Vohar before the next session started. And if the next session started and I made it through all the sessions, I would have missed Vohar prayer. So I was getting really nervous trying to figure out where can I go, how can I pray, and so on. As we were standing there, everyone's having food uh, and everything, and I couldn't really even stomach food because I, I, I was too nervous thinking that I didn't know where I was going to pray. And subhanAllah, out of nowhere, I see this hijabi. I was the only Muslim at this event, so there was no one else that I could talk to or, or ask and get advice from. So randomly, while we were at lunch, we had lunch on this outdoor patio, so it was outdoors and you could see students who were walking around campus and things. And randomly there was this hijabi uh, student walking from far away. And I saw her and she saw me. And she got so excited to see another hijabi on campus because there were so few of us. And she came all the way up to me, walking up to me to say uh, salam to me. And you know, I said salam to her and right away I told her, look, I'm really nervous and I need a place to pray. It's Dhuhr time and I don't know where to go. <laughs> Do you have any advice? And she was the sweetest person, mashallah. And she literally said, come with me. And she took me for about maybe a 10 minute walk and uh, to the prayer space that was on campus. And it was it had a code and so she knew the code. So she put in the code for, for the room. And then she showed me where they had a place to do wudu, where they had 
you know, the prayer space. She showed me all around everything and she waited for me even to pray. So I prayed, she waited, I was done, and then she took me back to the session. And if it wasn't for her, I would have totally missed my prayer. But the other thing that it reminded me of was the intention. Because I already had that intention, once I saw her immediately, I told myself, okay, I need to ask her because she's the person to ask, subhanAllah. And so that's just a quick story as a reminder that when we have the intention in place, doors will open up for us, inshallah, because we are already thinking about it. We are already aware and recognizing and putting effort, inshallah. So we will take those steps, inshallah, to make sure that we follow through. So the intention is really important. And so, for example, in this example, if I didn't have the intention, I would have just said salam to her, hi, how are you? And that's it, had a quick conversation and gone back to lunch, right? But if the intention is there, then inshallah, you take the next steps after that to follow through and inshallah, things open up and doors open up for you, inshallah. So that's the first point. It's really important to have the intention that you want to fulfill your daily prayers and fulfill other things related to your deen. So make the intention of what things you want to fulfill inshallah alongside your schooling and education so that's the first thing that's really important the second thing is good company and this is kind of linked to my first thing this random student that i met we ended up becoming very good friends throughout my time at university and she was the one i spent a lot of my time with we went on outings the different trips and so on and it was with her because she was somebody else who was also very firm sticking to her faith and so we had the same values and so we really connected over that and it's really important to have this good company because that company will encourage you and linked to this same same friend subhanallah this friend i learned a lot from so she had been in the u.s for a while before me as a student and, and living abroad and so on and i learned so much from her just indirectly about showing kindness and showing what islam really is and she would always go above and beyond for others she would always make sure to invite everyone over whether they're muslim or non-muslim she would invite them for meals to her home she would connect with everybody she would really spread kindness and whenever there was some islamic event happening for example say it's ramadan she would for example pack little goodie bags and with a note and explain how it's ramadan and she was just wanting to spread gifts around so she would give it to all the people in her building and her office mates and so on as a way to let people know that she's fasting for the next 30 days and as a way to kind of teach them a little bit about islam indirectly just let them know we're fasting for these 30 days it's a way for us to get closer to to god and also to spread generosity and so here i am spreading a little bit of generosity in this special month and things like that when it was Eid, she wouldn't only invite the muslims she would also invite non-muslims to celebrate Eid and so on so things like that i picked up indirectly from her mashallah may allah bless her and reward her immensely so good company is super important because good company will directly and indirectly influence you to do more good inshallah the third important thing is to plan classes around prayer. If you are at university and you have the option to choose your classes, then make sure you're choosing your classes around prayer. If you have the options of taking different courses, if you can choose between this course and, and that course, and one of them coincides with prayer while the other one doesn't, then pick the other one, inshallah. So try to make it easy for you to fulfill those obligations, to fulfill those prayers, inshallah. And sometimes it can be more difficult. For example, I had one semester where most of my classes were from 6 to 9 p.m. So instead of classes being three hours a week, for example, on Monday one hour, on Wednesday one hour, on Friday one hour, which was more typical, in my department what they did was they combined the three hours and put them all in one slot on one day and they did it in the evenings and the nights. So the classes would be from 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And it would cross through Maghrib. And so those classes that I had, that I had no option, they were all scheduled like that, 6 to 9.30 p.m., 6 to 9.30 p.m., 6 to 9.30 p.m. It was more of a, a struggle for me to figure out praying on time. So they would typically give us about 10 minute break in, in the middle of this class, so one and a half hours into the class. And so in that 10 minutes break, I would usually run to the prayer room on campus and then pray and then run back to class. And... 10 minutes wasn't enough, so I would always either have to leave 
maybe 10 minutes before the break starts to make sure I, I'm back by the end of the break or I would take more time than the break was and come to class uh, late. So I would stand out either leaving early or coming out late but to me it was more important to fulfill my prayers than to be sitting through class and missing prayers. That was the decision that, that I made when I didn't have a choice. And um, and you can even explain to your you can even explain to your professor, for example, hey, I'm so sorry, but you'll see me come leaving maybe a bit early sometimes or leaving a bit late, taking a break in class because I need to go pray. And usually professors are very understanding about this. And you just letting them know that this won't impact my performance in any way. I'm going to make sure I catch up and I, I get all the notes and everything so there's no concern and so on. You just reassure them that there's no concern, but I need to prioritize this prayer. And they're usually very understanding about this. Um, even for example, I had my advisor who sometimes we would have long research meetings that would take three hours, four hours sometimes. And so because it would cross through prayer sometimes, I would literally ask my advisor, hey, can I use your office to pray? And he was very okay <laughs> with it. He didn't have any problem with it. He actually would say, yes, go ahead, bless my office, go ahead and pray. And he would step out and, and just let me pray there in his office. So just be intentional again and plan things around prayer. Keep in mind when prayer is so that you're always pr prioritizing your prayers, inshallah. Number four, another tip. One of the things that I did was to purposefully not schedule things on Friday. So because I could choose my classes, I would try as much as possible when I had the option to not schedule anything on Friday or at the very least all of Friday morning to, to midday so that... I could go and join Jum'ah prayer. It wasn't something that I would do growing up in a Muslim country. I wouldn't go and join Jum'ah prayer. But being in a non-Muslim country, I felt the desire more to want to join Jum'ah prayer because it was one moment that I could have to connect to Deen, to listen to a khutbah and spend time amongst Muslims. So I decided to prioritize that. So find something you want to prioritize, inshallah, and try to plan your schedule around that. Um, Friday is a nice thing because Friday we have sunnahs. There's the reading Surah, surah Al-Kahf on Friday, so making time for that. If you want to go and attend Friday prayers and listen to the khutbah and so on, just having a morning or having an afternoon that you're really focused on your connection and your faith, inshallah. And one of the other things that's important is that, especially if you're in a non-Muslim country, usually universities have some sort of Muslim student group that you can join and they hold different events so that you can stay connected on a more regular basis to your faith, inshallah. And the last thing that I wanted to mention was having something that you do at least once a week. And this is semi tied to the point before about maybe it could be a Friday, for example, but having something where you're learning something new about your faith. So, for example, at university, we had for a few years, we had a sheikh who would come to university and hold a halaqa session. So he would come for about an hour and talk about a topic um, in Islam. So I would make sure to attend that halaqa once a week and that would be my once a week moment that I was learning something new from someone else. It doesn't have to be in person, it could even be once a week you decide this is my time to learn something new and you're watching something online or reading a book or something that's more dedicated to you learning and growing in your faith inshallah. And that's about it, those are five things that I think are very important and at least from my experience I feel that being in a non-Muslim country, in a university where there weren't many Muslims, these five things really helped me a lot to stay more connected um, to my faith. Because especially in a, in a non-Muslim environment, it's more challenging. You have to be more intentional and you have to work more towards sticking to your faith when you're not surrounded with people who are practicing uh, the same faith. So you have to be more intentional, more mindful, inshallah. And these are some things that um, I feel worked for me. And I hope that these tips, inshallah, also benefit you and, and also work for you, inshallah, whether you're in a Muslim environment or a non-Muslim environment. In both cases, I think these tips are hopefully beneficial, inshallah. And that's it for today. And until next time, inshallah, assalamu alaikum.